Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and uh, this video is uh, Machine Shop Tips number 226 on cutting a metric thread on the Atlas 12 inch lathe. And if you've watched the previous video, and I hope you did, number 225, in that video I showed you how to set the gears on the Atlas lathe for metric threads. So, that being done, this video is strictly on uh, cutting a metric thread, and in a previous video I showed how to cut a uh, standard uh, Imperial United States type thread on this lathe, and many of the uh, steps are exactly the same, so I'm not going to dwell on some of those. I'll run through them very briefly if you haven't seen that before, but uh, uh, watch those other videos and uh, you're going to see something here a little bit different concerning cutting a metric thread on a really American lathe. Looking at the gear train again here, that's already been uh, set up for metric threads as shown in the other one. Now if you have a lathe with uh, a quick change gearbox, I don't believe you're going to be able to do this. And remember this one came with a, a quick change gearbox and I converted it back, but, and in the next uh, few videos I will convert it again back to uh, the quick change gearbox. But looking at the uh, settings that you have here with a quick change gearbox, you can see that there is absolutely no provision for uh, cutting a metric thread. However, if you recall in the last video, I showed you in the book, in the Atlas book, that it said the engineers have calculated over 2,000 possibilities here when you use change gears. And that certainly is different than what is available with the quick change gearbox. So you, you do need standard change gears in order to do this on an Atlas lathe. The thread that I'm going to cut is a 12 millimeter diameter by a 1.75 pitch. 12 millimeter being just a little bit smaller than half inch. In fact, 12 millimeter is 472 thousandths. And since I had no 12 millimeter stock, and who does, I had to turn down uh, the end of some half inch stock to that diameter. And that's already been done, so I don't bore you with standard turning. And then looking into this uh, wonderful Atlas book, and I showed you some of this the other day, remember what the pitch means now. At 1.75 is the distance from the top of one thread to the other. But uh, there's a nice little section here, and it's very little really, on cutting metric threads on uh, the Atlas lathe. And Pause your video, if you will, and read this, because I'm not going to read all of this to you, but it's, it's interesting. So pause it and read that, and then pause it once again to read the continuation of it here on the next page right here. But what it's telling you is that we cannot use the uh, thread chasing dial, the threading dial. The, you can throw it away for this operation. You do not need it, and it will not work, and once we engage the lead screw with the half nut lever. It must be uh, continually engaged until the entire thread is cut. So that's the main difference between this and regular uh, imperial threading on the lathe. Let's go over to the lathe now and go through the various steps in the setup of the lathe. When you thread, especially if you're a novice at it, be sure and run the lathe in a, a slow speed. So I'm already in back gears, and uh, look at the uh, pulley step that the belt is in, and that is 70 RPM. So I'm going to be threading at 70 RPM in back gears. And I have the feed reverse lever set to the low position here. Uh, for this particular pitch, it may not be the same for all pitches, so always take a trial run to make sure that the carriage is feeding toward the headstock. Metric threads are 60 degrees, the same as American threads. So we need to set the compound at half of that, which is 30, and some books recommend 29, and that would be off to the right. Off to the left only when you're doing internal threading with a boring bar. So off to the right, and in order to swing your compound, loosen these two square headed bolts. And the protractor is over on the other side, or the zero mark here. So I'll do that off camera because it's, it's kind of tedious. I need a magnifying glass and a flashlight, but it'll be 29 degrees, which is about in that position. And then 
tighten the two screws. That's also a good position to leave the compound in for general turning. Why? Because it is uh, annoying to have both cranks in the same position. You will bump one against the other and there's an interference here. So generally always keep it off to the side and why not keep it at 29 while you're at it. Remember you cannot use the uh, thread dial for this so you can back it out or you can leave it engaged but it, uh, you don't want to run this in the lead screw any more than you have to because uh, of the wear and tear. Just preserve it for future jobs. So back it out and tighten it but actually what I'm going to do is remove it. And why am I removing it? Just for the dramatic effect. Here's some of the tools I've laid out and I'm going to use for this uh, video this thread cutting session. Now remember in the last one I used uh, this Shars preformed uh, pre-shaped 60 degree uh, threading tool made out of carbide and for variety I'm not going to use it this time. I'm going to use uh, a uh, tool that I ground some time ago, 60 degrees, because that's probably what you're going to use. So I want to show you different ways of doing that, and I'm going to hold it in this type of threading tool holder. This is Armstrong uh, S50. The purpose of the gooseneck here is that it allows just a little bit of flexing if necessary. This will bend to prevent chatter, so we'll see how that works. The tool goes in it'll take a quarter inch square tool, which is what this is, high speed steel. You may have one of these threading tool holders. That's a preformed tool. This is a craftsman, probably made by Atlas or made by Armstrong or Williams for them. There's the number on that if you got one of those. And when these get dull or break, you just grind the top and rotate it a little bit. Now the other thing about this threading tool or threading tool holder, it holds the tool straight out like that and that's really the way you want to present the tool to the work. If you're using a standard tool holder like this you must grind the top of the tool level. So if we were using the threading tool in that we'd have to grind the top of it as shown in the books and I don't want to talk about that now because I think that's off the subject. Now I used a 60 degree uh, center gauge in the last one. Some people call these a fishtail. You know why? I've got a lot of those but here's a, a steret. I particularly favor, or no this is a brown and sharp, I'm sorry. I particularly like this one because I'm using this little uh, attachment and that's a steret product. So I'm using brown and sharp into the steret which I suppose is sacrilege. But I like this. Put it in there, press it all the way because this little V-way here can be held uh, into the round stock. And remember what we're using that for is to square the tool up with the work. You want the tool to present it, be presented perfectly perpendicular to the tool. You don't want it like this. I'm exaggerating because you can imagine that you're going to get a crooked thread and it's not going to uh, to work. Remember that the threading tool cuts on this side where my finger is right near the end. That's where really where all the cutting is done. So when we feed this in with the compound at 29 degrees it's being fed in like this and always cutting on that edge. You don't want it to cut on both sides with a plunge cut. And I have a thread pitch gauge and this is a metric one set for the appropriate size which is 1.75 millimeters. That's the nut that I bought at Ace Hardware that I'm going to use to test the depth of the thread. And that's all I'm going to do as far as measuring. There is a spe specific dimension for that, but we're not going to be worried about that for this uh, particular project. I'll just use the nut when the thread comes to a V. What is wrong with this picture? And I've seen people do this, especially in the school shop. 
Well, we got way too much hanging out here, so we're lacking rigidity. Never do that with any kind of uh, tool holder. So we, we're going to choke it back up like that. And then we have way too much tool hanging out here. And you can cut your tool off if you want it to go straight in, but I'm just going to cock it a little bit like that so it clears. And that's a handy position to have it anyway, because then in effect we've got a bent tool holder similar if not identical to this. And then this will be tightened up. And there was a special wrench for that at one time that came with this, but I think it's long gone. I'll just have to use an adjustable. And you can see how that can flex right in here if necessary. Make sure that you have a, uh, a ring and a rocker on your tool post. I've seen people try to use it without uh, the rocker. They don't know that it's supposed to be a rocker, but that's what allows you to adjust the height. And I'm right on center. That's what we call the tool being on center. You do not want it to be above the center or below. However, you're probably a little bit better off to have it a little bit under because then it doesn't tend to dig in and uh, a little bit is probably permissible. Next we got to square the tool up with the work but let's take a look at the work. Since this is just an exercise or a sample I'm not going to hold it between centers. I'm not going to support it with the center but this is half inch diameter uh, 12L14 leaded screw machine stock and I've already turned it down right here to that diameter that I talked about and uh, which is in fact 12 millimeter here's a metric micrometer and I've turned it down pretty much right on Not pretty much, it is right on. Now when I turn this down, I used a standard micrometer, which is here someplace, because uh, I took it to the decimal equivalent of, uh, of 14 millimeter. And if you try to use a metric micrometer in turning something down on an American lathe, and you do not have metric dials right here, you're going to struggle with it. So use the metric micrometer for that. But I'm just double checking here and showing you that it is 12 millimeter. I have a minimum amount sticking here, sticking out from the chuck. I have I got an undercut here that's plenty deep and that's where I will terminate the thread. You need some place to terminate because remember threading now I cannot uh, drop the uh, half nut lever. I'm just going to have to stop the lathe, back the tool out and then return the uh, carriage under power to the beginning. You know there's so many different ways of doing this and one way is uh, to take your fishtail and just put the two tips of the tail up against the chuck or faceplate if whatever uh, a good flat surface is that's true and then you can move your tool. Remember I've already centered the tool left and right now until you get it right on and you can move your carriage back and forth right that's what I'm doing now is moving the carriage back and forth until it aligns perfectly in some cases put a piece of white paper under there and it helps reflect the light so that's the first way the other way is with this handy dandy attachment that I was bragging about here uh, put that right on the work and this also allows you to get your uh, left hand back out of the way and then bring the uh, uh, tool up to it and again I wish I had a piece of white paper but a paper helps to reflect the light you see until you get it lined up just perfectly so that's how to square up the tool and how to set it uh, and I got to do that off camera and then tighten it down. And after you tighten your tool post, uh, double check it again that it didn't uh, deflect a little bit as you tightened it. 
I think I'm spending more time explaining a tool setup here than I did on the other one, and perhaps too much time, period. But make sure that you have ample room over here so that your tool holder or your tool or uh, does not run into the chuck. In other words, crash it. Now, I hope not to go any past my undercut here. I'm going to stop it right there, and there's enough clearance, but you've got to be careful you don't crash it, especially if you're a beginner. So don't set that too close, but then again, if you have too much hanging out, you've got quite a bit of deflection to your work. Similarly, looking back, farther back here, make sure that this corner of your compound isn't going to run into the chuck. And if you examine any lathe that came from a school shop, you will find that this corner of the compound is absolutely beat to death by the hardened jaws of the chuck because the kids would run this up into the chuck and you could hear that dreaded rumbling sound clear across the shop. Also position your uh, lantern tool post in the T-slot here. Notice I'm a little bit off to the left. Not too far off to the right but uh, some place here where it's getting clamped uh, properly but I, li I tend to stick toward the, the left side here. So that's how I've got the uh, a uh, tool holder set. Remember I'm at 29 degrees here with the tool holder. Or, yeah, w or with the compound rather. 29 degrees with the compound. Next, I like to bring the tool up until it touches the work. It just scratches it. So I'm bringing it in real slowly until I see a little chip form. You see that? So now I'm, I'm actually touching the work. And that won't hurt a thing as long as you don't go in too far. 